sometimes it's tough to watch your teenagers make some decisions, especially, and I'm talking from personal experience, not uh -oh. my kids have made bad decisions, but like on Friday night, when they hang around with their friends or who they're dating, that, that's really when it comes into play. Right, no exception there when it comes to them making their decisions and parents maybe not being happy about it. So what do you do when that time old joke of dad waiting up with a shotgun isn't really that far from the truth? <laughs> Studio 5 relationship coach Matt Townsend knows that story well. He's here to share six rules to follow when your child is dating someone yes. that you don't like. That's sticky. You have the loaded gun ready? You're, yeah. the, you're the kind of person who probably would, oh, yeah. not you? And I, I meet him out in the driveway <laughs> in my underwear with my robe open. Eating Cheetos. Because uh, that freaks them yeah. out. That's the easiest way to get rid of these kids is just to embarrass your children enough. <laughs> my kids actually don't have many friends. Wonder I don't why. know why. Surprises. I think it's my mm -hmm. wife. Um, this is scary because what if these kids go off and they pick somebody that's a horrible person? I don't know, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> and they pick a horrible person, and then yet they have to spend the rest of their life with this person, right? So this is our fear. So what happens? We freak out. We start to panic. We start to control it. Six rules, are you ready? Yeah. Here's the rule number one. Don't react to somebody that's love challenged, okay? What's love challenged mean? Anybody that's drinking the love potion, <laughs> anybody that's really dopey because they're so in love, don't react to them. Okay, there's nothing worse than someone that's love drunk. The, oh, well, there's one thing worse. When the parents also act drunk and stupid because their kids all loved up. I hate that. Yeah. So the rule is, just don't react to them. Just notice that they're intoxicated with love. Let it go. And well, I mean, you got to let it go to a point. But don't freak out about it. Don't get angry about it. Don't get scared about it. Like, don't react to what? The child being like, I'm so in love and yeah. I can't live without don't, him. So don't you react. can't love yet. You're only 15. Okay. Don't freak out about it. It's just nature, right? Everyone's chemically driven. I mean, look at you two. And, um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means there. Well, that was awkward. Uh, but everyone has gone through this chemical love <laughs> stage. I him on today. And I don't know what it was. Today. It was our, I don't know. Oh. I, don't know. I haven't even had sugar today yet. Maybe I need sugar. But we all have had this chemical surge. And when the kids are going through this chemical thing, you don't need to get wrapped up in it. Just let them be them, and then you keep your head about you. We need at least one head in the game to make this work better. Okay? So we just listen and say, mm -hmm, That's right. mm -hmm. Does it run its course and die out it should. most of the time? If you'll stay out of the way, it usually will, right? So you're saying parents fuel the fire yeah, sometimes? Yeah, totally. Okay. Because then you turn it into something else, which gets into rule number two. Remain neutral, okay? If I push against Darren, what's your natural inclination? I can push, push back. back. Yeah. If I pull against Darren, his I natural inclination pull is to pull back. back. So if you're pushing on him or pulling on these kids, they're going to go the exact opposite direction. If you don't react, know that they're just a little yearning, all charged up chemically. Don't start pushing on them and don't start pulling them away from the person. Then they can stay neutral. As long as you keep them neutral, they don't have to go draw closer onto somebody that you don't want them drawing closer to. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So we're trying to not cause more problems, okay? Okay, this next rule, I, I'm intrigued. Yes. Trust the, let me get it right, trust, trust the, the stats and the brats. Right. What does that mean? So trust the stats. The stats say that most relationships we've all had have failed. So you probably don't need to worry about this one. At it's a young probably age. going to fail. Well, think of it. How many people did you date? It's like 700. I know, I've heard about you. <laughs> and out of 700, that, of all the people I dated, one. Yeah. So if it's 700 to one, trust those stats. This one that they're dating right now is probably not going to work. Trust that stat, number one. Number two, trust the brat, meaning your child. Your child is still your offspring. They still got a brain. They're not an idiot. And unless you raised them really poorly, this shouldn't go too badly, right? So trust the fact that you've taught them well, they have a brain, they're strong. Remember Remain neutral and trust that they're not gonna mess this up. But it's hard to trust when they're drinking that, what did you call it, the love, love potion? potion? Well, yeah, totally. That's and, hard. But the reality is you don't have any other choices. You can try to control them when they're under the influence of the love potion and that's just as unpredictable. Mm -hmm. So what I guess I'd say is if you've trained them well, this should go okay. Just trust the brat for a while, okay? Trust the stat and the brat. So far, I'm getting nervous because all of your things are just hang back and don't do anything mm -hmm. almost. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Is it, are you going to change here in the next three? Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. Next one? You're telling us to chill out. <laughs> well, part of it is just relax. Chillax. 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 I learned that from my kids. Rule number four, save your wisdom for the willing. Okay? A lot of parents try to express their incredible pearls of wisdom, and no one's listening. I wouldn't share your wisdom until they're willing to hear it. Now that means we gotta kinda get them willing to hear it, and there are ways to get them willing to hear it by not pushing, not pulling, by trying to remain neutral, but save it. Save your wisdom for when they're actually asking for it. 
save their wisdom for when they're actually talking to you about it instead of when you have to corner them in some garage at midnight <laughs> and figure out what's going on here. <laughs> Your wisdom doesn't work when people are already hijacked. Okay, I call but so it, right? often, so often, father knows best or mother knows best, and we want so much to give mm -hmm. the wisdom. We want them to ask for the wisdom. Yeah. What, what, do, what do we do to so get what, them to ask? What do? So what we, what we do is we usually grab at it and we squeeze them and squirt, <laughs> they squirt right away from us. So what we do instead is the best way to get anything is just relax. You want water in your hand, you got to relax your hand and let the water in. Then you can hold water. A lot of, you can grab for water all day long. With your kids, now this is weird, notice, it's counterintuitive. You need to actually wait for them to come to you for advice. Then you have power with them. Now sometimes they won't, so here's the rule. If you really have to talk to them, rule number five is share five positives to every negative. If all you ever talk about when you're talking about your son's girlfriend is what a dirty, nasty, ugly, whatever person she is, guess what? They won't trust you. Because you're not, that's not real. There's a lot about this young lady that's incredible. So what I would do is make sure they get that you get how great they are. So share the five positives about how wonderful they are before you ever share the negative. And the way you share the negative is not with a but. You don't say, she's a wonderful, decent, beautiful person, but her parents are weird. You don't do that. She's and, a wonderful, decent person, and, and... Are we implementing this technique even when they come to us for wisdom? Uh -huh. That's when that's we play exactly, out that's the, the best time to one. By the way, if you've been doing... If you can show your child why you love her, their, who they're dating to, mm -hmm. if you can understand why they think she's so great, then they start to trust you. See, the five to one rule means that I can see that my mom is not biased. That I can see that my mom can see the person's good and the negative, which means mom is trustworthy to me. If we only can see the negative, then I don't trust you. But if I don't like this kid, the girl or guy or whatever. I, I, I don't want I don't want to acknowledge anything good about no. them because you know the parents They're are evil. If we if we evil. acknowledge five good that's things, right. then that's gonna send the kid running closer to well, well, So our assumption is that our kids are automatically gonna be messed up about this. But see, as time goes on, which is the last one, slow it down. Nothing is more inclined to fix something than time. This, that's why most relationships fail. Because over time, if they're not forced to stay in it or stay away from it, the chemistry starts to fade. The fun, the excitement of it starts to fade, and then the obvious discrepancies or differences of that person will start to show. And what's ironic is you could have already told them about that. You might even lead them to that. The powerful thing is, if I can show them the five things that I love about your girl you're dating, I still get to tell them what I don't love. That's how I'm actually going to influence them. Now they're going to hear or be more inclined to hear what's not working with this person because they see that I also get the good. So you, you give them the good and the bad. Now notice, parents, this is saying you got to kind of pull back on control. But if you think of the people you respect most, think of the iconic people that you know were loving human beings. This is probably how they'd handle this. They wouldn't force, they wouldn't coerce, they wouldn't manipulate, they wouldn't just ground their child. Mm -hmm. They would get into their child, they'd go slow. And so one of the rules of any, th any relationship is just slow it down. If the relationship isn't stable, the slow, it's like if you're trying to ride a bike, have you ever noticed the slower you try to ride it, the harder it gets? Yeah. While mountain biking, my biggest falls always, I always fall at about one mile an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I never had a big fall going fast. I've had a lot of falls going about one mile an hour. So which just fall. shows how pathetic I am. Hang on to the handlebars, don't fall, slow down and relax. It all comes relax. down. Relax. I'm, I'm trying to okay, remember it all. all right, we have to lock cool. them in a room. You, you can, can lock them in a room. <laughs> we have to ask you about your next date night title, your this date night title. Is the best. Building your relationship IQ. Yes. What's a relationship check IQ? this out. Apparently some people are married to people that don't really get relationships. They're kind of slow relationally. Okay, a lot of times we call them husbands. <laughs> and in this date night, what we're going to be talking about are how to build your relationship IQ. So there's basic skills that make people strong or better relationally. And we're going to go over five cool. skills. And you got to be there. So go to matttownsend.com. Mm -hmm. Now the deal with these, these are getting really popular. So we actually are turning people away usually by the end of, by right before the, the thing. Mm -hmm. So if you want this, you got to get on the website today, Matt Town, it's, I think it's date nights with Matt mm -hmm. dot com and sign up and get on right away or you'll probably not get this chance. Okay. Don't miss it. They're a lot of fun. Thanks, Tons Matt. Of fun. Thanks, kids. Okay, she's the